Okay, so um, let's start the, the the new presentation. So the the new presentation will be a fireside a fireside chat with uh, Quentin Le Brusté, uh, co-founder and CTO at uh, Back Market, and Mehdi from API Days. Hello, Mehdi again. <laughs> Hello, so, Hello, Nicolas. How are you? Fine, fine. <laughs> so let's wait, uh, Quentin. Hello there. Hi, Quentin. Or Quentin in French. <laughs> yeah, you can say Quentin, it's okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so you can start, Mehdi and Quentin, and Quentin, and I will hide my screen. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Nicola. And actually, this, this fireside chat is, is about, uh, you know, one of the comments, uh, Celine from the Shift Project and AXA, uh, uh, shared this morning about like one of the main impacts of actually uh, information technologies is probably on the device manufacturing and on the hardware, uh, right? More than the uh, that just the use or the energy consumption or, or, or the network. So we wanted to be sure that we tackle the topic of uh, uh, the hardware and the uh, 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 the reconditioning of the hardware and what best than Quentin and Buck Market to do it. So hello, Quentin, how are you? I'm very fine, thank you, and you, Mehdi? Really good, really good, really good to have you there. Uh, maybe for people who don't know you and who don't know Buck Market, can you tell us a little bit about your background and uh, what is Buck Market uh, uh, today? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, so on my background, uh, I started, uh, let's say, working eight years ago uh, as a, an engineering, software engineering uh, in a small company called NetEven. And then uh, we were basically um, at a a very good spot to um, um, observe what is going on on the marketplace side. Um, and as we were working with Refurbisher, um, we decided to launch Back Market six years ago. Um, and the idea of Back Market is basically um, to to sell a refurbished device and to buy back refurbished device. Uh, meaning that if you have some uh, smartphone, tablet, console that you are not using, that, uh, that are in your locker, for instance, you can sell it back on back market and have some money on that. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, so that's for back market. Um, why did we decide to launch back market? Um, basically, uh, refurbished device, uh, we, we thought they were really good for the planet uh, because they were bringing um, the best attribute of the both world we all, uh, we all know, the new world, basically, um, and the second-hand world. And on, back, um, on the refurbished device, basically, you are taking advantage of these two worlds by bringing um, all the quality of a new device because they are refurbished. Refurbished mean um, they are repaired. Um, we, we are going to polish the scratch, uh, change the battery if the battery is um, too too much used, basically. Um, and all these devices was um, before back market was sold um, on eBay, Amazon, uh, second hand. And basically, that was not okay for us because. Um, Compared to the second hand, there is really um, a lot of efforts that are done to make this product uh, works well again. There is a warranty and so on, but they are sold at the price of the second hand market. So that's really uh, interesting for customers and for us. Um, and it's a new way to consume tech device, basically. So uh, can you share some numbers about back market today? I don't know how many location employees, uh, how many products, on the available or sold, whatever, what you can share with us. Yeah, sure. Um, we have 30,000 um, kind of products on the website. Uh, we are 400 employees um, and we are still hiring a lot. Um, like on my team, the tech and product side, we will be looking for 130 people next year. So that's a uh, kind of uh, huge. Um, we are located in France, um, but we are um, like we have offices in France, uh, Germany, uh, in the US and Prague, um, but we open a lot of market. We are open in 10 countries in Europe, including Germany, UK, France, Spain, and we are um, for three years now um, scaling in the US as well. 
Um, and let's say, I think we are going to reach uh, the billion GMV this year, um, if you want uh, some numbers. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that begins to be an impact, right? <laughs> Definitely. Just for the continuation of the, of the discussion for people who don't know yet, you know your market do you see do, do you have a, is there any difference between refurbished or reconditioned or is the same thing um depend who's who you're talking about <laughs> i would say uh but uh, on our side um we aim to do refurbished i would say the difference uh recondition is more about um repackaging you know when you have a return but you never touch the product you just repackage it uh, that could be re uh, reconditioned refurbished is more about um it's like doctors of electronics um the, these guys are all uh, dressed in white uh, looking to repair the product uh, change every piece that is not working anymore and there, there is like a, a real uh, impact on these products Okay, so we talk about refurbished in your case more yeah. than reconditioned, right? Okay, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the, the question is like, you know, a lot of people wants to uh, uh, used to want to buy, re let's say, used or secondhand product, but as you said, you know, sometimes there is a lot of issues. It's hard to find them, to trust the seller. Uh, you know, to don't you don't really know the state of the product. Uh, uh, do you have um, an idea about all the problems? Of uh, of secondhand product that back back market solves today. Yeah, that was at the very beginning of the of the project. Um, when we launched back market, we wanted to reproduce more an Apple experience than a, an Amazon one. Let's say so. If you go on back market and uh, start typing iPhone six uh, says Giga and so on, you will only find one uh, product on back market, whereas you are going to find like tons of page, let's say 500 page on Amazon, and you are going to open one page and another and another to compare. And there is nothing, nothing similar, you know, um, there is price difference, warranty difference, and so on. So it's hard for the customer to really um, choose the right product. On back market, we decided to make curation. And uh, let's say we have more than 100 uh, refurbisher on the marketplace. That means people that are repairing and reselling uh, phones or computers and so on. Um, and on back market, we are we have this curation algorithm that uh, that is going to select the right product based on um, quality criteria and uh, price criteria. So we want to provide to the customer the best ratio between quality and price. Yeah, it makes sense because all secondhand products are not the same. They are not in the same state or the same shape, but all refurbished products should be right in the same state. So you can only just have one to show because they're in a sense, your job is to make them all the same like new, right? Yeah, um, there is a difference on the, we, for same product, we have a um, variation of grades, which means um, the aesthetic uh, criteria of the product. Um, as yeah. you know, it's secondhand. So perhaps uh, we are going to buy back a phone with a big scratch that we won't be able to uh, repair. Um, so the phone will be 100% person functional, but um, let's say it can have a scratch. And um, based on this um, uh, size of the scratch, let's say uh, you have a huge discount uh, on the product. That's why yeah. we are able to provide like a uh, iPhone with 70% reduction uh, based on the new one. So if you accept a, a scratch, you can have a great, <laughs> a great yeah. discount. And, it, and if you don't like scratches, we have um, like, um, um, yeah, we have shiny, uh, shiny grade. That means like they're, they are as new, basically. It's often a new product that have been shipped. And when you uh, refuse the package, you are not able to sell it back as a new product. So these come in the refurbished category. Um, they are tested, but as they are fully functional, there is few things to do on it. And uh, we only have to repackage it to sell it back at the real uh, premium quality. Yeah. What, what are the most attractive products on the market? Because we've, we see your ads and we love them just to say, at least I, I represent the people who, who uh, some part of the people, but they are funny. They are, they are really great. Congrats to your marketing team. But what are the most attractive products on the market? Um, 
I would say the most common product that is by the phone because it's a must have for every people on the planet, basically. Uh, but we tend to follow the trends. So uh, today we sell a lot of um, electronic bikes, let's say. Um, but also with the lockdown, we uh, we sell a lot of webcams, uh, computers and so on. Like people need to uh, equip themselves and they are not able to afford like uh, three computers for the three children they have so uh, we are really there to to make this happen um so yeah we we tend to follow the trend um now it's the console christmas is coming people want to uh, entertain themselves so we we provide all of these products yeah brace yourselves <laughs> christmas is coming right so this is i can imagine what it yeah. is for a retailer as a CTO uh, and uh, uh, and founder of the company. Um, so now let's talk more about you know we're in the sustainable uh, uh, software and 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 digital track. Uh, so today, to to your mind, I'm sure most of the people come for the economic reasons, right? You know, it's cheaper. But do you see a growing or how do you see it uh, a part of the user base uh, who comes for also ecological or carbon reduction reasons? Do you see it or it's not there yet? Yeah, uh, it's more and more there, uh, to be honest. Um, at the very beginning of back market, people were coming for the price. Uh, but at the end of the funnel, we told them, OK, dude, you, you come and you buy uh, a phone because it's um, less uh, expensive than a new one. But uh, at the end, you are doing something good for the planet because, um, you know, all the um, all the footprint is or majority of the footprint for an electronic device is done uh, when it's built. It's like 90%. Um, the seven other percent will be when it's going to be destroyed. So we are there to, you know, um, make this product circulate more and more to um, um, reduce this impact over time. Um, so um, we have customers that now are coming for refurbished uh, product uh, because they just don't want to consume uh, new ones. Um, and for some reason, um, they are, if we are not highly competitive on a specific product with a specific price, we also saw people that are willing to pay um, the same price of, of a new product, but to consume really a refurbished product. So we have the both world, like people having not enough money to be able to afford a new one, but also people that want to make a gesture for the planet. And also uh, uh, on your hiring, you know, you need to hire 130 people, but do you see also some people coming I'm sure because the company is great, because they, uh, probably uh, the, the, the payroll is, 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 uh, is um, competitive on the market. But do you see also some people coming to say, yes, we will fight like some carbon uh, 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 footprint with, uh, uh, with refurbished product? Do you see it? Is it part of the, the, the meetings or the interviews or, or not yet? Almost everyone, I would say. Uh, we are all at back market really convinced of what we are doing there. Um, so I would say 100% are coming for this reason. Uh, or perhaps it's not the main driver, but they are all concerned. Um, some people on the techs are coming for the tech challenge, obviously. Uh, as you say, we are a big retailer. Uh, we reach, I don't know, maybe around 500,000 requests per second. So we have high volumetry that uh, uh, attract people that want challenges. Um, but um, yeah, definitely um, we see uh, people that don't want to work in ads anymore. Uh, we have recently like a lot of engineers coming from Amazon um, that don't want to um, be part of this uh, overproduction of new product and that want to you know um, have sense in their life and wake up in the morning to to have uh, something to fight yeah often what i say it's uh engineers or 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 um, managers who wants to do from 9 a.m to 6 p.m what they and uh, what they do in their personal life right they want to continue to stay aligned uh, with, with their job, with their life and and and, um, and and ideas, yeah. So I totally get it. There is one question. So you were saying, you know, ninety percent of the carbon footprint is at the is at the the building of the product, right? Most of the time, and seven percent at the destruction. Uh, again, if you but if you keep it like seven, five, six, or ten years, right? Uh, uh, you you can reduce it uh, uh, at some point because you will use it more, so the proportion will be lower. Uh, but yeah, yeah it, it's the it's the large majority. It's at the building of it. So refurbishing totally makes sense in the lower lowering the carbon emissions. I want to talk to to you about planned obsolescence, right? The fact that some device manufacturer kind of uh, on purpose 
sometimes they say it's not, but on purpose, like degrade the product over time to for you to replace it. Yeah. And we had a discussion together. There are different kind of planned obsolescence. There is the technical one, the psychological ones, or or, or, or some others. Yeah, how uh, how does it affect or enable your business to have this planned obsolescence uh, mechanism in the industry? Um, well, we are really um, at the right seat uh, to see it, basically. So we, when the planned obsolescence, the odd, um, the technical one are coming up, uh, we are there to take this uh, device that is not working anymore and just perhaps change the obsolete piece. Um, so it used to be the battery, for instance, um, on the phones, let's say. Uh, so there is it. Um, we have some experience with Apple uh, as well. You know, when um, they changed the, when you upgrade the version of your Apple, um, they were like um, destroying the battery usage. Um, so they, they had some, uh, um, yeah, they have some, um, some business to do with the justice and um, they, they they lose it uh, anyway. So now uh, um, they can't do that uh, and they are communicating on that. Like uh, we don't do uh, any software obsolescence anymore. Uh, but uh, yeah, for, for us, it's, uh, um, it's good to see that uh, we can take this, this products that are not working anymore and make them having a second or third life. Uh, that, that is really important for us. We are basically there to fight the overproduction of um, these devices. Um, if we can jump on the recycling, uh, let's say for 100 um, phones that are going to be created, uh, 25 are going to be destroyed without um, any usage. That they won't be sold at any time. They just will be produced and then destroyed. And that's what we are fighting for. Like uh, the planet have um, few resources, and we need to consume consume it um, in a correct way. And the correct way will be to not trying to make um, tons of money on it, basically. And uh, yeah, let, let just be reasonable. Um, so, so yeah, uh, we are also, you, you were talking about uh, um, psychological uh, obsolescence. Uh, that's something we are trying to fight as well. Um, like every year um, when there is a, um, a keynote, for instance, uh, trying to sell you the new brand uh, iPhone, um, with the, which is revolutionary because um, it's one inch more on the screen size and uh, you know uh, the battery is still uh, uh, an issue and so on. Uh, we are trying to reborn um, older products of Apple, let's say. So when they released the iPhone 10, we were saying to the world like iPhone 8 is still good guys. Uh, you don't need the last one and so on. So we try to put like emotion back on these uh, older devices. Yeah, it's the best old iPhone ever made. <laughs> iPhone yeah. 8 in 2020, right? <laughs> we, we had a marketing campaign um, taking pictures of iPhone 10 and iPhone um, 7, and that was the same picture, for instance. Yeah, same, same, but different, as they say in, in Southeast Asia. But uh, <laughs> So, uh, no, uh, it totally makes sense. So it seems you reproduce the user experience. Like you say, we want to be the Apple of a refurbished product. Like we are, you are only, only one, have one vendor, one reference. So it's easier. Uh, you, you do also, uh, you know, this kind of relaunch, right, even. So, so yeah, uh, it seems UX is really important because... Uh, people may want to come to back market, back market for economical reasons or ecological reasons, but it seems that if the UX is not here, you know, you're, uh, they will just not buy at the end, right? So how important is UX in what you do? It's highly important. Um, it's part of our vision, uh, to be honest. Um, the North Star of back market is there is no more factual reason to buy new. Um, so we are fighting every day. Um, to improve the UX, uh, to improve the customer experience, to improve the care experience, uh, because uh, we need to be as good as the new category. So um, Amazon is doing an amazing job um, and you uh, like really feel confident by buying on Amazon and we want to do the same on back market. We want to provide the same experience, uh, but it comes to every new category. Let's say in France, we have, um, let's say Darty. When you buy a fridge at Darty, they are coming to your house, um, um, plugging the new fridge and taking back the old one. That's something we want to achieve at back market to uh, be sure that um, we provide the same experience at 
very minimum and then we will be able to improve this experience but you are totally right um uh, Customer is king, basically. So uh, if we want to achieve our vision, if we want to make the refurbished um, the the first reflex for consumers uh, before trying to go in the new category, uh, we need to be as good as them. Um, so that, that's a day-to-day -day, um, challenge for us. I'm not, I don't hear you. Sorry, I was on mute. Is it seems you want to keep the virtuous people virtuous, right? Yeah. You know, you want you want UX to not lose them, uh, you know, and so they go back to other other models. I totally uh, I totally understand. Um, so we have two questions uh, who arise from uh, big fans. Actually, it seems we have Dio who say, "What happens when the product are beyond repair? Do you have a specific recycling route?" Ah, that's a great one. Um... As back market, we don't, but we have partners that do that. Uh, so uh, definitively, uh, we are trying to reroute this product in the best way, um, to be honest. Um, but we are also um, like we are big fan of repurposed. You know, it's uh, bringing a new sense of on a, on a device. So we are not doing that yet, but that's something we want to go. Let's say um, the first iPhone that have been made, um, it's not usable anymore. You know, the app are not maintained and so on, but uh, you could definitely transform it, let's say into a garden camera to protect your house, for instance, also so many things. So there is a lot of things to do with that. And even um, if this product is over, um, uh, yeah, is overpriced and you can't use it anymore, it can still have some value. Um, that's why we are buybacking. So uh, a lot of uh, devices because we can always extract something and use it in another devices. So we are really um, willing to, um, exploit at 100% uh, every, uh, possible things that we can do on, on these products. So recycling is just the next step. First you refurbish, fine, you repair uh, to refurbish, then sometimes you find, uh, fine, you have ideas for repurposing or sometimes you buy back to co take components and then recycling come only at the end when there is no more solution it seems, right? That's the that's a huge that's problem cool. in France uh, because um, for let's say 50 years, uh, we have been telling that recycling is good uh if a product is recycling uh, it's okay to buy it and so on you know that's why we have a tons of bottle of plastic everywhere in the world um so that is not true recycling should be the last step uh, and we should uh, try to do our best to um, take advantage of all the products before they, they are going to recycling and is even in the recycling category um what Every products are not recycled. Um, there is only, let's say, 30 to 50 percent, depending on the the product. But um, other will be just, uh, you know, uh, throw away in the seas, throw away in Africa, and so on. So uh, we are really there to uh, um, to see this not happening because recycling is not a solution. It should be the last step. Yeah, we we, we arrived to the last uh, three minutes of our of our fireside chat, and we have, just to say we have some fans actually who say we are with you in this big fight. We have uh, this album, Arno say, I have stuff to send you, right? So <laughs> already some people are are convinced. So maybe uh, two, two opening questions, right? Uh, um, um, I had a discussion about back market with some people in the, in the industry and they say, oh, did they imagine one day internally sharing a carbon footprint saving calculator on their product page? They say, hey, if you buy this iPhone 8 versus iPhone 12, you know, like comparison, uh, all right. So yeah, this, you say I don't know twelve tons of uh, carbon and uh, rare earth and 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 rare materials. Do you have a, a, a thought about this or? Yeah, um, actually, we do something on, about it. Uh, at the end, when you buy a product, you, you will be uh, able to know how much raw materials did you avoid in and so on, and uh, um, how much CO2 you have avoided by buying a new one. Uh, so we are doing that at the end of the funnel, and we aim to put it back on the product page, to be honest. Uh, we also um, want on the product page to uh, display like um, um, the price evolution of a product uh, to, to, to see f how fast is it going down, you know, because every day that comes up, uh, the price is going down. Um, so, so yeah. 
Yeah, and, and you have we have Dio in the in the chat who say repurposing is great, and even me, like I was like mind blown. He said, "Yeah, repurposing my iPhone six can be a, ca a good camera, whatever for the thing it doesn't work, uh, for the other thing it doesn't work, but for the silly it still works." Yeah, totally repurposing. Let's repurpose everything, right? Yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, no, that's re really mind blowing, right? And thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, yeah, we think recycling is the solution. No, recycling is the last, but great, but last solution. Uh, yeah. Right, we need to be more imaginative. Maybe last question here. Uh, you know, we have some people, you know, we have the uh, au conseil au climat in France, like people really thinking large policies about environment. Some people are considering, considering uh, refurbishing into entering for companies into, let's say, carbon footprint reduction and or conservation, right? So, if you, if as a company, you buy 1,000 uh, phones refurbished you could claim a carbon compensation and you know, calculate that in your societal and environmental purposes. What would be the impact for the whole refurbishing market? You know, if a new law comes, they say, yeah, now when you buy refurbished, you can count this as carbon compensation. Just exploration, that right? We yeah, for sure, that would be huge. Um, and uh, we are totally uh, aligned with that. Um, we are not doing yet some B2B or we are doing it on the cherry picking, let's say. Uh, but that's something we really want to move on uh, to be able to um, uh, yeah, equip every corporation, every uh, small size, medium companies and so on. Um, if this kind of uh, direction would be taken in, that would be huge for us. I, I can totally imagine. So again, uh, we have a lot of people who are uh, cheering what you do in, in the chat. Uh, and, and yes, we really thank you for having been there with us. To know more about back market, uh, either for careers, either for being a customer, it's, what's the website? Backmarket.fr for friends or .com for, for others. And we have a job page, uh, jobs.markmarket.com if you want to uh, know more about it. Yeah, so for engineers, architects, developers, product managers in the EPIDS community, you can go there to align your uh, uh, conv uh, convictions, right? To align your ideas with uh, with your job. Thank you very much, Quentin, for having been there with us. I think it was a really insightful discussion. And now, Nicolas, the stage is yours again. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mehdi. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mehdi. Thank you.